Hi, I'm Peter Murphy with the Oregon Department of Transportation and your host for the program. We're into a new calendar year now, and you need to know that one of the new rules out there on the highway is that we have to lose the cell phone. We're only driving hands-free now. It'll keep folks a lot safer with a lot less distracted driving. About this time of year, we usually have a pretty good snowpack, but you know we're about half where we should be. But if the Oregon Department of Agriculture is right, we're still due for a La Nina winter, and we want you to know that ODOT's prepared for it. Also in the program today, we'll be telling you more about how we plan for winter weather and what we're doing to prepare to keep you safe on the highway. Plus, we'll take you to the most remote ODOT outpost that we could find and still call it Central Oregon. And coming up a little bit later in the program, we'll take you on a cattle drive. All that and more coming up as we take you along our Central Oregon highways. So when winter weather does hit, we want you to know that we have an arsenal of tools to help take care of you. We have cinders, we have plows, and we have de-icer. And of course, we have men and women with the experience on the highway. The idea is to head off trouble before it even starts. We try to be proactive so they're ahead of any problems. Sometimes those problems come quickly in the form of either a pocket of rain that freezes suddenly to ice, an accident that causes secondary accidents. So you can't always predict where they're going to be, but we know most of the spots where there's, there's going to be trouble and we, we get there ahead of time. Highway 97 is essentially one big mountain pass between Madras and Klamath Falls. This is a profile of the US 26, US 97 corridor. So basically, if you're driving from Portland to California on, on uh, 2697, this is what it's going to look like for elevations. These peaks over here, this is Government Camp, and that secondary peak, just a little bit higher, is called Blue Box Pass. And of course, they get a lot of attention for snow and ice. But if you come down here and look, this is uh, Lava Butte just south of Ben, and, and this high point on Highway 97 is Shamolt. Now uh, you can see that these are mountain passes over here, but this is one long continuous mountain pass over here. That is why it gets a lot of winter attention. We use a lot of sand and a lot of de-icer and a lot of people out there moving snow and, and protecting traffic. Using a lot of sand, he says. How much, you ask? Uh, last year we calculated we put out 3,400 truckloads. That's basically 9 to 10 yards per truckload. We use a lot of magnesium chloride, de-icer we used close to a million dollars worth last year, and sand in a similar range of dollars. How we use sand, and de-icer too, is a technique that's been proven over the years. We simply don't put either everywhere all over our Central Oregon highways. We have to be judicious where we put it, and when we put it out. Uh, we put it out where it uh, has the most effect for traffic safety. What we found checking with the state cops is that when you put sand out, it increases their speed about 15 miles an hour. So you put the sand out, it builds an envelope of safety, and then you drive right to the edge of that envelope again. So you're not much safer than you were to just bare roads uh, or bare ice even. So that's why we always hear uh, every traffic safety person, cops, ODOT, doesn't matter who, they're always saying slow down on the snow and ice. You can't, you can't maintain safety with a higher speed. It's just not going to happen. When winter weather hits Central Oregon, we've got a small army of crews out there to keep you safe on the highway. The first thing you should know is that ODOT is on duty 24-7 when necessary. Our average crew size per shift is about seven employees if they're fully loaded, if they don't have people sick or vacations or furloughs. And we have the option to call people in. We can have up to six plow trucks. Geographic area is from uh, Vandervert Road, Fall River, to the High Bridge at Terrebonne up to Bachelor to the very top. And then we also go out east on Highway 20 to uh, milepost 19. And then we also have 3rd Street, Business 97, Greenwood, and uh, Parkway. Generally speaking, our crews are on duty well before the morning commute and well after the evening rush hour, and when things get bad, all hours of the day. Priorities are Highway 97 all the way through if we can. 97 north to Terrebonne is usually a little less on the snow. So we concentrate on Lava Butte, Business 97, Greenwood, and the Parkway. The game plan is to have someone on duty either checking the highway conditions or taking care of them. It's when the snow and ice events hit that we're really put to the test, trying to be everywhere at the same time, and that's just not possible. The hardest part from our side is everybody believes we should be where they're at, and we can't. 
we start from this point and work our way out. And the crews are really good. They'll go out and work their way out to like Lava Butte and they'll stay down there. You'll have one or two guys that will stay down in that area. And then we got somebody that works town and so on and so forth. That's the best we can do. And if we have an area that's getting harder, then we'll concentrate on that. Since Lava Butte is the high point near Bend, we put a lot of attention out there. Mount Bachelor, the snow parks, and Highway 97 round out our top priorities. And then there are the men and women who maintain communications with our crews out in the field. They're the technicians with the Traffic Operations Center. And if you think it gets busy out here on the highway, well, you should watch them work nonstop. In one case in last year, in one day alone, we had 178 crashes in just about a 15-mile span. Every one of our consoles going and still not being able to keep up. 10 and 80, we have a report of ice on Lava Butte. So how do we make sure that our field crews have, have the right level of support from the communication area. staff? We gear up for winter. I have different seasonal people that we bring back every year in order to staff up so we have a full schedule of at least two people per shift. And then if the shift has a huge inclement weather event, then we go ahead and we bring in additional people on top of that. And the crew in the operations center has to cover a geographic area from the crest of the Cascades all the way to the Idaho border. ODOT goes to great lengths to keep you safe on the highway, winter, summer, spring, fall, and those great lengths including quite some distance from here in Bend, out at Alkali Lake, where three crew members take care of the highway all year long to keep you safe. 11M50, 11M51. Uh, yeah, James, just want to let you guys know that the hog bag's been sanded and everything's good south. We'll be back to the station in about 15, 20 minutes. Out there between the Abear Rim and the last ice age, ODOT's Bob Blessing Game drives a snowplow to keep the highway clear of ice and snow. This stretch of US 395 is about an hour and a half north of Lakeview, three hours southeast of Bend, squeezed between Alkali Lake and a 3,000-foot-high geological feature called an escarpment. On this day, the low reached about 2 degrees above zero. Dangerous temperatures if a motorist gets stuck. And when motorists get stuck, which happens often enough, Bob and his mates are there to help them out. When somebody gets in a wreck or gets uh, stuck somewhere out here, they're really stuck. There's nothing around here. And cell range is uh, pretty spotty through here, so... Yeah, I get real appreciation for it. I mean, we've gone out and rescued people, and we're the only ones out here that respond. The compound at Alkali Lake looks a lot like other ODOT compounds across the state, but with a big difference. At this one, there are homes for the crews to live in, since that's part of their duty. And living in Alkali Lake comes with some pros and cons. For instance, the nearest convenience store, well, it's not very convenient. Freeze your bread, freeze your milk, freeze your meat. The nearest convenience store is 50 miles away, so you can't just run down and get a soda pop. The U.S. mail does get delivered, three times a week maybe. Then there are the highway maintenance jobs that take the whole crew, two flaggers and a worker. But in spite of what us city folk might think to be the hardships of living and working in the Oregon outback, our ODOT crews are happy to be there. I don't want to be anywhere but here. You know, this works out just well for me. I don't want to work out of a city like Bend somewhere like that, just too many people for my way I like to live. I wouldn't change anything, it's a solitude. You're not in the middle of a hectic uh, lifestyle like a bend or even Lakeview. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I love it out here, the quiet. It's a beautiful place to be. And isn't it great that motorists know that the ODOT folks who take care of this remote stretch of highway really want to be there. Cold weather doesn't stop ODOT from doing its job, nor does it stop commerce from happening all across the state. Down Silver Lake Way, cowboys brave cold weather to move their stock. They do it along the Oregon Outback Scenic Byway. Whether it's moving the hay or moving the cattle, ODOT's highways help make it happen. Either way, Oregon's Highway 31, the Outback Scenic Byway, is the chosen route. Way back when, this was the path that Native Americans used to track game around Silver Lake. The pioneers used the same route to settle the area. Today, modern cowboys use the traditional route to move their cattle from one grazing area to another. These are uh, mother cows. They're uh, uh, all 
bred. They're all calvy. They have a calf in them. Uh, we've just weaned the calves off of them. We'll get them through the winter and head for spring country on green grass to calve them. Withers, his wife and son and daughter, take their herd of 700 cows along Highway 31 to move from one pasture to another since they found it's a whole lot less expensive to move cattle than it is to move hay. And just because it's wintry weather doesn't put a hitch in their giddy-up. ODOT's plowing the road for cars and trucks anyway, so why not use it for a 21st century cattle drive? They're great. <laughs> we get along good with the ODOT people and, and it's just really a blessing that we're able to continue to do it. Since the Withers family owns grazing land all around Silver Lake and Paisley, moving their herd along Highway 31 makes the most sense. It kind of interconnects different pieces of property that we own up and down the lake here. It'd be a lot of days of work to truck these cattle and a lot of fuel and all that. And we can just get them all together in one bunch and drive them in one day and have it done. And since most of these animals have made the trip before, they pretty much know the route and the rules of the road to get there. The Highway 97 corridor on the north part of Bend here is more crowded than planners ever thought it would be by now. Witness the sign right behind me here. Safe to say we've reached a congestion and a saturation point. While ODOT is working on a solution to the problem, and it includes plans, public hearings, and more, and it's well underway. The simulation that Cooley and to a lesser extent Robel show us that there'll be long delays, long backups of traffic. The other thing that tells us is that there's more people that want to use the system than can actually use it. Congestion is a problem. It delays freight, it delays commuters, it causes safety problems, and if we wait it's only going to get worse. We put numbers together to develop a simulation of what traffic will look like in 2035. And when we look at how traffic operates particularly if we don't do anything, essentially traffic's moving at walking speed on US 97 through the corridor. Our experience of a worst case scenario is traffic can't turn on or off the highway, which then cues back into the through lanes, which then causes congestion on the highway itself, which can then result in some very severe type crashes. There are a few other places in Oregon that have experienced a similar challenge. One example would be Mission Street, Oregon 22 in Salem. And some sections of the road, they've widened it to six lanes of through traffic with multiple turn lanes. So you end up with cross sections that are eight or nine lanes wide. Oftentimes in the peak periods, it can take multiple cycles for motorists to get through a signal. So they're not just waiting for a red light, they're waiting for a red light. It goes green, they still can't make it through the signal because of the congestion. And they might have to wait for two or three more green lights. And that's the scenario we foresee in Bend if we don't do anything. So the choices that ODOT is faced with are something like this. We can make small improvements with ramp meters and that kind of thing, and then see that used up, gain more congestion, make another small improvement, get that used up and see more congestion. Or we could do what we did down at 3rd Street, and that is create a parallel highway and relieve the congestion on the city street. Well, that's the direction in which ODOT is leaning today. We've covered a lot of territory in our program today. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you on down the road.